Hello, my name is Edison Oliveira and I'll be presenting this video for DeadEndHere.com and in this video I'll be discussing and talking about the event log uh, feature of .NET NUC. So, uh, first of all, what is the event log of, of .NET NUC? Uh, let's, let's log into the website as host and we can discuss that a little bit better. See, under admin there is an option that says event viewer. So, uh, what does classify uh, as an event? Event is almost anything that happens in the website. For instance, uh, a user that log in, a user that log out, a restart of the website, an error that was uh, generated uh, for some reason. Anyway, there are numerous types of events that uh, .dot nuke is able to log and to create a record about that event. Now, each and every time that we that we create a, a new .dot site from scratch, what happens is that there are a couple of, of types of events that are automatically logged in uh, when when we start using the website. For instance, some, when someone uh, logs into the website. Or someone logs out from the website, so the web the the website uh, log can can increase quite a lot. Let's have a look at some of those events. So again, we are here under admin event viewer. If as as host level, uh, because the admin level has uh, slightly more restricted uh, access than the host level. So if we go to the action menu and go to edit log settings which by the way is only accessible by host level not by admin level admin can only see the list of of uh, log entries uh, admin cannot edit the log settings so if we go to the log settings of the website you can see uh, uh, quite quite a, a big list of different events that are being tracked uh, by the website and you can see in the call that says active if that event is being tracked or not. If it's set to true, it's because that event is being logged. If it's set to false, it's because that event is not being logged yet. And and this is this is the standard default configuration of .NET NUC 542. So as you can see there are quite a few uh, events that are being logged automatically. Lots here at the bottom. Login failure, login success. Now let's explore a little bit uh, one of those events and, and the, the options for those events. They are pretty much the same from one to the next one. So uh, the first, the first uh, option says login enable and if it's checked it's because it's, it, that this event is being logged. If it's not checked it's because this event will not be logged. So in this particular case we are logging uh, the application start. And in the drop down of log type, you can see all the different events that you can uh, track on your .dot website. Under portal, you can say that uh, this event will be tracked in all portals or just in a particular portal. Let's keep it as all. Keep most recent uh, entries. The default option it's coming as as ten log entries, but you can keep as low as one. As low as just the last entry or up to 500 entries up to you just keep in mind that again this can grow quite big and I will address that uh, in, in, in a few minutes now file name this seems to be a, a new feature it's either a new feature that I have I haven't seen it yet or it's just a feature that is not working yet because I have tried before to put a file name here and the file name is not even uh, Stored in the database yet, so I'll ignore this file name for now. I suppose that again, this might be something that is just not working, or that will work eventually, and maybe the log will be able to be to be stored in a file in the file system. Because right now, the all, all log here is being stored in the database. Now, going uh, just going down here. We have uh, an email notification uh, option. So, what does that mean? Is basically if that event is triggered, then an email will be sent. And here's where you can put the email address from, the email address to, 
Again, this will be using the SMTP information set under host, host settings. And occurrence threshold, this, this basically says that uh, if I, that, uh, I want an email to be sent if, and then I can select one or three or four, let's say, if 10 occurrences of this event happens in, let's say, in 10 minutes. So what this basically is saying is that if I check enable notification, email notification enabled, and my threshold is this one, it, which is if 10 occurrences of this event happens in in the time frame of 10 minutes, then send an email from this address to this address just to notify to the, let's say, to the admin of the website that the site is, uh, that this event is happening too frequent. For instance, it might be, let's, let's look at the, a general exception. General exception means that there is a problem with the website. There is a problem happening here. So if, if a general exception happens, if, if, in our example here, if 10 general exceptions happens in the time frame of 10 minutes, then so and so should be advised about that. Should receive an email, so most likely the admin of the website, so he can come in and can check what is going on here. So basically, those are the the log settings of of the events that you can set up on that you can track on your dot website. Let's go back to to the event list, sorry, to the log viewer. So basically at the top you have options to filter by portal, by type of event. As you can see, this is this is just a test site, a test site, and we already have six pages of, of uh, logs here, which uh, each page has 10 entries, so we already have 60 entries here, and this is a brand new site just that I'm using just for testing. So you can uh, specify how many records per page, if you want color coding. So this is basically a filtering uh, mechanism that you can that you can use to filter the log entries. Now, one thing that I particularly do in each and every uh, new website that I put out there, dotted website, is that I basically disable this log completely because uh, unless there is a problem happening with the website and I need to track more details about that problem. Otherwise, honestly speaking, I don't need the, this information being logged here because, again, if everything is going normal with the website, I just don't need this information. And as I told you before, this information can grow quite big, it can grow very, very big. It can grow so big that this option here that says clear log which if I click will delete all the log. If 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 the site, uh, if the log, the log entries have grown so much big, this clear log will not even work properly because it will time out before it say it's really able to delete all the entries of, of the database. So again, very be very aware of this feature because it comes already activated. And if you, in my recommendation to you is, unless you are trying to track an error or problem in your website, otherwise I would recommend that you just come to the, to the pull down menu, click edit settings, and then start uh, setting active to false on each and every event. Just by doing this, click update. So again, just turn them all off. Now again, this is just a recommendation. Uh, you, you use your own judgment. You also have the option to select a couple of events and delete just the selected events. That's what I just did. But again, the feature that I find most useful is if I want to track general exceptions or exceptions, other types of exceptions, I can activate them and I can click here. I can see the details. I can try to find what's going on. This is really the most useful feature that I think uh, is, is available from the log viewer point of view. So this is basically it. This is a general overview of the log viewer and, and uh, log uh, uh, gathering capabilities of .NET In a later video, I will cover more about uh, performance issues in regards to log viewer, but this is a general overview. Thank you very much. Bye.